before I start today's episode, I thought I'd talk about uh, something from last episode that I'm going to kind of change a little bit. In the last episode, if you remember, I was saying uh, timing in terms of million. So, like, for example, I would say, like, 2,500 million years ago. And today, instead of doing that, I'm going to say something like 2.5 billion years ago. I think that it'll, it'll like, talk about it in terms of billion years and then going down. Because the, the Earth formed 4 billion years ago. And at the point right now, we're about 2.5 billion years in. And so we're about halfway, a little over halfway of the uh, Earth's formation. Or f halfway from the time that the Earth formed. And so I thought that it would be better to talk about it in terms of that. Because if I say million, like like 2,500 million years ago, it sounds so much sooner. So I don't know, I just thought I'd change it this way. And then once I get under a billion, then I'll start talking about it in terms of million and thousands and, you know. Another thing I wanted to address was uh, the farthest I kind of zoomed out in the past couple episodes was to Eon, like an Eon. And so what I want to do now is kind of go through the whole, like all the eras and eons that I can zooming out because we're about to finish up one of the super eons and I haven't even gotten into those yet. So uh, we start with the eon before and each eon has uh, a certain amount of eras in it. And some eras, as we'll get into this episode, have a couple periods in them too so that you can just zoom in farther and farther to the specific event. So we're going to get really into this uh, into this era and this whole eon in general. And uh, even farther out than the eon is the super eon. So say a super eon will have three eons, and each eon will have five eras, and each era will have five periods. Like there's so many like things you can zoom in, in on. So yeah, I thought that I would just address that before. We're gonna get a little more into that, but today's episode is gonna be on the uh, Proterozoic eon, and uh, we're gonna talk about in specific the Paleo Proterozoic era. So that's just going to be part one of today, and then tomorrow we'll get into the Mesoproterozoic and then the Neoproterozoic. But uh, these parts are getting a little more in debt, so I thought I would talk about the eras and kind of separate them so that we can focus on one thing at a time. So yeah, that's the gist of today's episode. So we're going to be getting into the Paleoproterozoic era on Down the Line. All right, welcome back. I'm your host Pete, and like I said for the tenth time, we're gonna get, we're gonna be getting into the Proterozoic Eon, and uh, so today we're gonna start with the Proterozoic Eon. We're gonna talk about the general Eon in itself, and then we'll get into more specifically the Paleoproterozoic Era, which is the first era of this Eon. And so to start with the actual Eon itself, the name Proterozoic comes from Greek, and it actually means earlier life which is a proto meaning former or earlier, and zoic meaning animal or living being. The protozoic eon extended from 2.5 billion years ago to 541 million years ago and is the most recent part of the Precambrian era. And that's actually what we talked about at the beginning of this episode. That's one of the, the first super eon. And it doesn't say it's like a super eon, it just says era. But it's the earliest part of Earth's history set before the Cambrian era. The uh, Precambrian accounts for almost 90% of the Earth's geologic time and consists of the Hadean, Archean, and Proterozoic eons. And so that's kind of what we've been getting into these past couple episodes. Like, uh, all the episodes could go into the Precambrian era itself. The Proterozoic eon is divided into three eras, the Paleo, Meso, and Neo-Proterozoic eras. And so like, today we're going to be getting into the first one, which is the Paleo-Proterozoic. The uh, well-identified events of this eon were the transition to an oxygenated atmosphere during the Paleoproterozoic, which is going to be today's episode, several glaciations which produced the hypothesized snowball earth theory during the cryogenian period in the late Neoproterozoic era. And the snowball earth theory proposed that Earth's surface was entirely or almost entirely frozen at least once, sometime earlier than 650 million years ago. Another well-identified event of this period is the Edecaran period, which is characterized by the evolution of abundant, soft-bodied, multicellular organisms and provides us with the first obvious fossil evidence of life on Earth. So now we're actually going to get into the Paleoproterozoic Era, which is the first era of the uh, Proterozoic Eon, and it spans from 2.5 to 1.6 billion years ago. The Paleoproterozoic Era has four periods, the Siderian, Ricean, Orocerian, 
in Statherian periods. So fucking confusing. All these all these periods and eras and eons and super eons. It's like, jeez. So the first period that we're going to get into is the Siderian period, which is the first one. It's Greek, and it means iron. It lasted from 2.5 to 2.3 billion years ago. The laying down of the banded iron formations, I'm just going to call them biffs, just for the fuck of it, I don't know, <laughs> so I don't have to say it over and over again. These peaked early in this period. In the last episode, we talked about the newly developed cyanobacteria, which started producing oxygen, leading to a catastrophe. We talked a little bit about last episode, but it actually happened during this period, so we're going to get into a little bit more detail. Between 2.7 and 2.4 billion years ago, most of this oxygen produced by the cyanobacteria got absorbed by the copious levels of dissolved iron in the ocean water. This produced rust, which accumulated on the seafloors as biffs, the banded iron formations, and when the dissolved iron was all used up, the greenish seas became clear and biff production stopped. The oxygen began to add to the atmosphere, changing it from an orange to a blue atmosphere, and led to the oxygen catastrophe, which happened to have killed all life that found oxygen poisonous, 90% of which was life underwater, and 70% was life on land. That's actually another thing. If you guys want to check out these biffs, the, you can look up banded iron formations on Google, and they're actually pretty cool. They don't look like something that was formed naturally. They look like, like someone painted on rock. But they're completely natural. They were just made from rust. Obviously, there's there's nobody that could paint the rocks, but at the time at least. But um, yeah, they're re they're really cool. If you guys want to look them up, just Google it. Uh, next, we're gonna get into the Rycian period, and uh, that comes from the Greek word meaning stream of lava. And man, I just I really wish that we would just call it like the stream of lava period instead of the you know Rycian period, because I have a lot of trouble pronouncing these these Greek words, and they just mean like, there's an English translation, so it's like, why don't we start using that? <laughs> but uh, anyway, sorry, off topic. That's the second geologic period in the Paleoproterozoic era, and it lasted from 2.3 to 2.05 billion years ago. The Bushveld Igneous Complex, which contains some of the richest ore deposits on Earth, and other similar intrusions were actually formed during this period. The first known eukaryotes began to evolve in the Ryacene period. Eukaryotes are any organisms whose cells have a cell nucleus and other organelles enclosed within membranes. In basic terms, they're just multicellular life. So they're the first kind of you know, multicellular life, which is technically us. The multicellular Franzvillian group fossils are from this period, and they're regarded as evidence in the earliest forms of multicellular life. That's another thing you can Google if you want, the Franzvillian group fossils. Um, they're just, you know... They're pretty much dead corpses of uh, these really weird-looking bugs that existed during this period of time. They just, they look like these giant, like, insect bug things. I don't know. But they were actually pretty creepy. Like, if they existed today, they'd, they'd be pretty freaky looking. The next one we're going to get into is the Orocerian period. And that comes from the Greek word meaning mountain range. It is the third geologic period in the Paleoproterozoic era and lasted from 2.05 to 1.8 billion years ago. Two of the largest known impact events on Earth occurred during the Orocerian period. At the very beginning of this period, a large asteroid collision created the Verdefort impact structure. No idea that's how that's pronounced. That's the largest verified impact crater. The event that, caught, that created the Sudbury Basin structure occurred near the end of this period also at about 1.85 billion years ago. So uh, the two like largest impacts occurred at the very beginning and the very end of this period. Also, the supercontinent Columbia formed at the end of this period and made up the cores of the continents of Laurentia, Baltica, those are two uh, continents that were in the last episode too, um, the Ukrainian Shield, Amazonian Shield, Australia, and possibly Siberia, North China, and uh, Calaria as well. Calaria, I think, was in the last one too. And then last, we have the Statherian period. And that comes from the Greek word meaning stable. <laughs> I mean, why don't we just call it stable? Like, this should just be called the stable period. But uh, it's the final geologic period in the Paleoproterozoic era and lasted from 1.8 to 1.6 billion years ago. But at the beginning of the Statherian, the supercontinent Columbia had assembled. And uh, that's the last kind of information I have for this episode. But I do want to add, why the fuck... Do we name a supercontinent uh, Columbia 
when Colombia is already a landmass that fuck like why name an ancient landmass that isn't around anymore after a landmass that is around today <laughs> it makes no fucking sense but uh, anyway that's that's the end of this episode um, the next one will be getting into the meso uh era and uh, that's gonna be a pretty cool one so I hope you guys really like this episode and uh, I'll see you next episode